So uh, let's talk about what gets into the into the auto release port. Basically, any object you get from a call to Coco, that object when you get it back will be in the auto release port. In fact, you should you should use a rule of thumb that any object ever returned by any method in your program is going to be in the auto release port. Um, we already talked about the fact that any object you make with an alloc new copy or mutable copy, those objects are not in the auto release pool, unless of course you write code to put them in manually. But uh, when you get those objects back from alloc, they have retain count of one and they're not in the auto release pool. So then any object reference you get from any other way is in the auto release pool. So this is this is the convention, um, and if you remember this, um, then your your memory management woes will uh, mostly start to clear up. Not only do you remember this in terms of figuring out well this particular object you have is it in an auto release pool or not, but you have to remember this when you're writing your own code. So uh, any any time you return an object from a method you should have already put that object into the auto release pool so that this convention is kept because remember we set up here any object returned by any method is in the auto release pool so if, if that's your method that's returning the object you have to make that true by passing the object the auto release message so we'll, we'll see an example with that okay so so here's that example here's a very very simple method in my class called make a my class so it's like a factory method if uh, if you've heard of that uh, we create a new instance of a my class object with an alloc we init it at that point its retain count is one and we're actually going to return that object from this method so the convention is any object which uh, gets returned out of a method has to be in the auto release pool. That's very easy to happen. You just pass the auto release message to that object before you return it. Now, um, doing this is so common that uh, you'll often see programmers put that all in one line with this nested alloc in it auto release like that. It's very common indeed. Um, just going over this one more time, um, a slightly different way. Think about what would happen if you didn't auto release this object at this point you'd be returning the object out of this method and it would have a retain count of one which means it would have to be released by something now the way these conven this convention works is um, if you write code that uh, creates an object that code should be responsible for cleaning that object up for for releasing that object because uh, when you create it, it has a retain count of one so you should be responsible for making sure the retain count goes back down to zero so that's kind of what this auto release is the auto release doesn't make the retain count go to zero right now but it's a promise that sometime in the future at the end of the event loop in fact uh, the retain count will go down so that's how uh, this this method can can keep this convention that if you create an object you're responsible for cleaning it up you can see that if you try to release that uh, object the my object right there before you returned it well that's not going to work because the retain count is going to go to zero the object gets deleted and then you'll be returning a reference to a deleted object which is of course going to cause a crash you can experiment with this in some exercise code and uh, it will click um, if uh, if it didn't make quite make sense yet um, slight variation on how to look at this is the balancing of the retains and releases if you look at this code we've got one alloc we don't have any retain calls and we've got one auto release and no release calls there's a basic it's sum that in any method for a particular object these things should balance so the number of allocs plus the number of retains should equal the number of releases plus the number of auto releases and it might, it's not always as quite as straightforward as you have to have this sum true for every method because um, you might have a release in a destructor 
but basically you have to think about the life cycle of the object which is handling some other object and you have to think about uh, if you have a balance between the number of allocs and retains and the number of releases and auto releases. Um, so I'd mentioned this this idea of who owns the object and this is a way that a lot of people teaching you memory management on the iPhone um, this is this is something a lot of people will talk about to explain this. Um, so when they say if you own an object you have to release it that basically means you own an object if you created that object using alloc, new, copy or mutable copy um, or if you manually retain an object in your code. So if you retain an object it's like you're claiming ownership to it and if you claim ownership to an object then at some point later you're responsible for releasing that object. And of course color is true. If you don't own it you shouldn't release the object. If you have a reference to an object which you don't own, i.e. you didn't create it yourself, um, then certainly it's already in an auto-release pool. Uh, and if it's in an auto-release pool already, and then you release it yourself, then it's possible it will get uh, deleted, it will get released twice, or, or its, its retain count will go to zero, get deleted, and then it will get released again by the auto-release pool, which would cause a crash.